All right, Moises, it's on. Let's all rise and give it the honors. Mm -hmm. Five on the left, two on the right. A lot of Father of the Universe. A lot of Father of the Universe. Father of Love. Father of Love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And Justice. And Justice. A lot of my protector. A lot of my protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night. By night. And by day. And by day. To His Holy Prophet. To His Holy Prophet. Noble Jawali. Noble Jawali. Islam. Islam. Islam to the Moors online. We're just going to start off with our readings to be read every meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must put an end to all radical and agitating speeches while on their jobs, homes, or on the public streets. We advocate peace and not destruction. Stop trying out your cards with the Europeans for it causes confusion. There has been much confusion caused by members trying out their cards. The cards are for your salvation. Failure of obeying my orders will be of severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members that seek to hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet, or to violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement, will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors must obey the laws laid down to them by their prophet, and if they lose confidence in their prophet, give up your card and button, cease wearing your turban or fez, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. For this is a holy and divine movement founded by the Prophet Nobu Juali. And if the Prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The Prophet is sending out a divine plea to all true Moorish Americans that they may do their part in protecting their Prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the Prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Nobu Juali. To the members of the Moor Science Temple of America, Islam, these are the instructions from your holy Prophet Drew Ali, be careful unto your forefathers, be faithful unto your forefathers, divine and national creed, that you will be blessed for your good deeds that you sow in the flesh. Allah is the one that judges the world, and his judgment is now on, but the weak comprehend it not. The end of time is drawing near, so says Allah to his divine prophet, I know Drew Ali, and that is why many hearts have turned to stone, many have eyes to see but cannot see, ears to hear but cannot hear, lest they would be confounded of their sins. These are trying hours now, dear Moors, and every evil spirit is moving, and they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation that has been laid, and to cause confusion in the minds of the ones that do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not of what you hear or see, but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your prophet. Watch your enemies, dear Moors. Your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet, and ridicule him to the very lowest, and the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temples. Act accordingly, and Allah will bless you for your good work. Peace, your divine prophet, Nobu Juali. Islam, I am glad to know that I have a few faithful Moors among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people on our side of the nation that claim it was only a joke and unreal. But now since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens, they are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they themselves may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that attribute to the movement and uplifting funds. The ones that paid their divine respect to me and the movement will be remembered. That is why I am calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moorish movement. I need finance and I need it badly. Never before have I needed finance so badly as I do at present so I can shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being head. It has been proven by my works which I have performed in the last few years. Is love. Um, today, um, we are going to talk about. Um, today, we're going to be addressing um, self denationalization, um, or why why the people 
why our people um, aren't jumping on this information as fast as they should be. Um, before we do that, I just wanted to bring up this article that was um, in the 24th paper, January 10th, 2017. There was, there was actually two of them. Um, David Aiken, the bureau chief for the parliamentary, wrote an article on um, did Trudeau violate the law over the holidays? Uh, Conservative MP Andrew Scheer filed a formal complaint Monday with Parliament's Conflict of Interest Commissioner alleging that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau violated federal law when he and his family accepted a vacation from the Aga Khan at the Aga Khan's private island in the Bahamas over the recent holidays. It is the latest incident in which Trudeau's political opponents are arguing that he is failing to uphold his very own edict delivered to his cabinet and parliamentary secretaries as they were sworn in in late 2015 that they must arrange their private affairs in a manner that will bear the closest public scrutiny. The PMO maintains that the Aga Khan is a close friend, blah, blah, blah. His Highness has a, a his Highness was a pallbearer at his father's funeral. Aga Khan is also a member of the board of directors of the Aga Khan Foundation, an organization which is registered to lobby the Canadian government as it competes for Canadian foreign aid money. The foundation and its organization, the Aga Khan Development Network, has been a significant recipient of Canadian foreign aid, receiving $310 million from the Canadian government for 16 projects since 2014. Keep in mind all the homelessness and all the stuff going on that they can't seem to find money for. Mm -hmm. Most recently, the Trudeau government granted the Aga Khan Development Network $55 million over five years to improve maternal and child health in Afghanistan. The federal government also contributed $30 million to the construction of the Aga Khan Foundation's Can Canada's headquarters in Ottawa. And then don't forget Aga Khan Museum that they just built too, that they didn't mention in there. The professional and financial connection between the government of Canada and the Aga Khan's foundation and network should be enough, ensures views to raise some red flags. While Scheer is the first to file a formal complaint, his fellow caucus colleagues, Lisa Raitt and Kelly Leach, also called out Trudeau on the trip. Quote, there are clear rules on lobbying and ethics. Is the PM so arrogant that he thinks he's above them? Raitt said on Twitter, Canadians deserve a prompt investigation into apparent breach of Conflict of Interest Act, Leach said also on Twitter. He clearly tried to hide his whereabouts. Sheer rape and Leach are all competing for their party's leadership. <coughs> now, the, the, um, keep in mind some things that they mentioned. Um, conflict of Interest Commissioner so there's somebody who's responsible for conflict of interest throughout the, um, the parliamentary um, proceedings or whatever, right? Um, and as well, the Conflict of Interest Act. So when we say, once they say act, they're not dealing with official law. They're not dealing with, with um, even if you want to put, even if you want to say universal, universal law, right? They're dealing with policies that were created by them for them, only apply to them, doesn't apply to anybody else. So this is why you have these people coming up and speaking on situations that are, that are going on, right? Um, and obviously, you know, as you know, nothing's going to be done about it because that's Pierre Trudeau's son, and Pierre Trudeau is, you know, Canada's 
number one guy. You know what I mean? Um, you know, trilateral commissioner, um, Rosh trial, all that stuff. Right? Um, the second article was um, everybody's, um, you know, getting, getting in, in on not necessarily an uproar, but you know, wondering what's eventually going to happen when the queen dies. What's going to happen to the crown? Who's going to who's going to inherit quote unquote Canada after she right leaves? Um, so some things that they brought up. Um, there is no secret vault of King Charles the Third currency. The queen's most visible presence in Canada is on the money. In 2015 alone, 100 million quarters bearing the image of Queen Elizabeth II were minted in Winnipeg. But as the Royal Canadian Mint told Post Media Network, it would be weird for them to constantly, to be constantly guessing who the next monarch is gonna be, right? And for one thing, Charles may not even adopt the name King Charles III. The name Charles doesn't have the most steer, sterling record. The first one was beheaded for a start. So, he might go with one of his middle names, King George, King Arthur, King Philip. Official portraits of the Queen could remain up as long as a year. When the United States changes its head of state on January 20th, federal buildings across the country will swap out their portraits of Barack Obama with one of Trump. But Canada will back with by its time until after the coronation, which may not take place for more than a year. We're in for a whole lot of paperwork. For a period of as long as 18 months, bureaucrats in virtually every branch of Canadian government will have to meticulously weed out all mentions of quote-unquote queen and replace it with quote-unquote king. Making it all the more confusing is that some references to Queen Elizabeth II will remain. Alberta's Queen Elizabeth II Highway, for instance, was named for the sovereign personally, so the title says. Canada doesn't mourn like we used to. The 1901 death of Queen Victoria was a big, big deal in Canada. Common citizens wore black armbands for weeks. Black borders were placed around government announcements. Theater performances were canceled because they weren't solemn enough. We have met under the shadow of a death which has caused more universal mourning than has ever been recorded in the pages of history. In these, wor in these words, there is no exaggeration. There are the literal, they are the literal truth, said Prime Minister Wilfrid Laurier at the time. We calmed down somewhat by the 1952 death of King George, but even then, Parliament Hill was draped in black bunting a measure that even some in the UK saw excessive. So, just to say, you know, Canada's got their own issues right now. So it's important that the um, people who, who qualify themselves as being part of Canada, with Canada, Canadian citizens, whatever like that, um, find some type of ulter ulterior thing to attach themselves to. Because, you know, it's, where it's at right now, it's already gone downhill, right? Um, and then this is where um, the, the international communi community making the declarations that people have right to a nationality and things like that comes in so that um, individuals who have adopted um, certain, um, we'll say, states as their, their um, citizenship to realize that they weren't citizens of countries. All these things, all these so-called places are really corporate entities that are holding the people as property and, and, and milking them of their energy to keep their whatever it is that they want going. And as soon as the people realize that, hold on a second, we can't be, if, if I'm a living being, I can't be property. Yeah. Right? Only dead things are property. Yeah. So, so they have to come to the realization that either the people that they're saying that they're, or the, the countries, states, whatever, that they're saying that they're tied to, either those things are making the people dead people, or the people themselves are ignorant to the fact that 
they're living and they have to have themselves tied to a nationality in order to be considered quote unquote human beings or whatever like that. Right? We, yes, bro. We, 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 we as people don't know that though. Right. A lot of our people don't know that. What you just said. They, they, they say, okay, I'm black, I'm African. Right. And that's it. But exactly. in reality, as what you say, if you don't have a nationality, then, and I mean, obviously somebody own you. Right. If right. you don't have your own identity. Right. And, and this, is, this is the whole thing about, you know, getting Nova Jolly out the way, getting Marcus Garvey yeah. out the way, um, you know, um, um, making, making his imperial majesty go into the, exile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these things yeah. are relative to the fact that they started talking about this N-word, nations, yeah. nationality, that people just thought were, you know, they're just saying something to boost their people. Right when really they were they were giving them certain keys. Knowledge. They were giving them certain knowledge to get them over the hump to realize that okay they they have to recognize for themselves that something's wrong yeah. and then make a change because you can't expect these people to do anything about it. They're gonna hold us hostage. They already are. Yeah, yeah, the majority yeah, of the people yeah, they are, are already they, held yeah, yeah. in bondage. Yeah, yeah. Right, and then that's that's on. You know, that's what, you know, birth certificates, licenses, whatever like that. We're not even talking about the mental bondage yet. Yeah. We're not even dealing with, they don't even have their own mind. They got somebody else's mind, yeah. <laughs> right? And then thinking that with somebody else's mind, because they get, you know, um, some funding or a yeah, building or somebody says, nice. oh, Martin Luther King Day or whatever like that, that, that means something. All those things are just moral nice. stuff that, you know, people, they, they know that people are, are um, um, in, in a state of wanting something. Yeah. People are in a state of, they need a leader and yeah. they need somebody yeah. to stand up on their behalf Look because, to. right? But it's really them. Because even Yahshua told all these people, ye are God, so what, what are you waiting for somebody else to do something? Right? Yeah. You know? Um, even with, with Noble Jwali telling people, you know what I mean, that, you know, you have to recognize that you have to be yourself. You can't be something other than who you are. As soon as you're something other than who you are, then that gives the, the, the um, powers that be the power yeah. that people are complaining about, which they shouldn't really be, be complaining because they're the ones that signed up for it by not knowing who they are. Yeah. Black. Like when, when, Mark, when Garvey came, and told them in the letter that he wrote from Atlanta prison to all these Garveyites that the only way the Negro is going to be happy is if he has a nationality. Yeah. It's in the letter, right? Keep in mind, years prior to that, Marcus Garvey wrote articles saying that nationality doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you have a nationality, because we're African and all that stuff like that. Uh, you know what I mean? Nationality knows no boundaries of anything. We don't have to tie ourselves to that. So I guess Marcus Garvey is one of them who make us too get denied too, in a sense then, because if he write, come back and write that, we are going to listen to him. Right. As, but, but, but again... As people, as real Morris people who right. don't know ourselves, we're going to say, you know what, well, you know Marcus say, that I mean nothing, so freak that. Right, you right. Know? But but again, come th this, this comes back to, to why did he make that statement after? After that, you find right? out something. Something clicked in you him. Find out something. He recognized something, right? And again, the letter was written from Atlanta prison. Hey, right. Prison. Now, what what the Garvey guys won't talk about is that meeting that happened between Marcus Garvey and Noble Juali while he was in Atlanta prison. So Mar so Marcus Garvey got put on game, which is why he even wrote the letter. To all the Garveyites. Because remember that that during that time it was you were either NAACP or whatever, right? Niagara movement and all that. You were either Moorish Jew, Rastafarian, Garveyite, or more. Yeah. Like that was that was it that you were part of. There was no NOI back then. Yeah. There was no um, black movement, black power, or whatever. Yeah. There was none of that. Right? Um, so they, they get Noel Juali out the way. They ship Marcus Garvey out. 
right? They deport him, right? The um, the the Jews of Harlem pretty much basically they, they, that just went underground because remember they also went to Haile Selassie's coronation, yeah. right? Um, and then who's left? The so-called Boulay guys, W. Du Bois and the NAACP crew or whatever like that. That everybody gravitated to that as some type of whatever, and then everything that came from 1930 or came out of 1930 for the liberation of our people, right? Because there was nothing else at that point for them, yeah. right? Um, when, when, um, when we look at also what we're gonna be talking about today, how, how is it that, that these people were given these messages by these individuals, the leaders, um, that they say they uphold and all that stuff, and then Still today, there's they have no connection to what their nationality is. They're still absent-minded of yeah. the of the fact that we, you know, all these people said that we're a nation, right? NOI says that they're a nation, the nation of Islam. Gods on earth say that they're a nation, the nation of gods on earth. Hebrew Israelites say that they're a nation. Rastafarians say they're a nation, black sovereign, whatever, right? But then when you ask them what their nationality is, he asked me the same thing. Everybody has no idea. He asked me the same thing. Right? But I I, I that is the it's not it's, it's a very good question. And I think that's the the, the question of the day. Right. Yeah. Any right. man could have asked any other man. And, and this is what be. That's why Noble Juali said nationality is the order of the day. Yeah, that's how it crushed me. But the order of the day is nationality. What's your nationality? But there's a reason why our people pull back from nationality. And it's all based in, in the history that our people never want to deal with. They'll deal with every, every other history. They'll deal, with, they'll deal with pyramid history, metaphysical history, and all that stuff. But as soon as you start talking about Moorish history, they have, they, they have a reason why they can't be tied to it. You know, pale Arabs or whatever, that's who Moors are. Moors are Berbers. Moors enslaved black people, Moors did this, Moors did that. But what they fail to realize is the, I don't know if there's any dictionaries out there. Actually, the only blacks out there. Only blacks out there? Um, the big one there, that's on the, on your, on your green. Oh, that's all. Um, that's black too. Oh, that's yeah. 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 Just look up um, trauma in there. Trauma. Yeah. Trauma. Trauma. The campaign was. No, I'm just gonna keep it up. In 1492. Jews and the Moors were removed from what they call Spain at that time, right? In, in getting the Moors out of Spain, which in, which in turn went into getting the Moors out of Europe, getting Moors pretty much um, not known is based on trauma, trauma. Uh, right more more so more so psychological trauma okay right so when you go through the history of the moors in 1492 the only thing that comes up is the inquisition against them which was the campaign between Ferdinand, Queen Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand King to, to, to force the Moors to not be Moors, right? To force them that if, if you see one of these individuals talking about um, um, any type of connection to their Moorish history, take their head. 
Simple as that, right? Now, that's going to have an effect on the people who are classified as the return of the ancients, who, who remember all these, all these um, so-called secret societies, whatever, of Europeans that rule the world, they already know that the ancients are going to come back again, right? In a, in a different body, yeah. in a different time, but it's going to be these same people yeah. who we had, um, you know, wars with, whatever like that, during this time, right? So now, so now we're here now, and we have the information. We have the metaphysical information. We have the esoteric information. We have the things that that supposed to be able to raise us to the vibration where we don't have to deal with the issues that we see that we're dealing with. But we're dealing with these issues because of psychological trauma. Because we inherited the trauma that yeah. these yeah. people went through. Yeah, and it has an effect. It has an effect. Yeah, right, for years. Right. Years upon years. And this is why it's so change. easy for our people to say that they're black. Yeah. Say that they're African. I mean, a nigga, got people, man, still say man, a nigga. Right. <laughs> right. But they're not but really still. recognizing yeah. that they're only doing that because they've been traumatized. Right? And, 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 and you know, it's, it's, it's our job as people who have this information to, to, you know, leave the metaphysical stuff alone, leave the esoteric stuff alone, and get down to the history of our people so that they can they can reconsider, you know, Garvey's message, yeah. you know, Amos Wilson's message, um, Naeem Akbar's message, Tony Martin's message, all these individuals who we grew up on when we came, <coughs> we, now we know ourselves because we, but you still call yourself black, clearly you don't know yourself. We got all these books packed up to the ceiling or whatever like that. You calling yourself African? Clearly, you didn't read them books, or you missed what was being yeah. told still, you in those books. Still reading us as Tracy. They yeah. give them a whole month to come in right. next month. Whole month. Whole month. Right. right. Black history. Nobody is getting. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is getting. Right. Mm. And 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 now so now now remember too that 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 trauma now is gonna be. The, on top of the trauma already, mm -hmm. now we have the trauma now of, you know, guy get choked out on the corner. Mm -hmm. the sister get pulled over and get killed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now you have that trauma now on top of this trauma mm -hmm. that, that we never dealt with. And as soon as we realize that, that all these things are connected, then we're going to come to the realization that, okay, there's, there, there's actually people who have superior knowledge that have kept certain things back. And the fact that they kept certain things back is why the trauma still exists. Because they know what it is that, they know the keys that we have to get. You know what I mean? Everybody else has it. Look at everybody else. Look at, look at everybody who got reparations. Right? After us. Like, mad people got reparations after us. Everybody knows that we're the most suffering people on the planet. In the world. And we can't get nothing yet? Yeah. Just on the strength that we're the most suffering people and we still can't get nothing yet? There obviously there obviously is some issues. Right? You got um trauma there, Tess? Yeah. Trauma. Greek for wound. Now bodily injury, wound. Emotional shock having a lasting effect. I remember we were talking about psychological, so the wounds, the wounds that we got mm -hmm. are mental. Mm -hmm. The shock, if anybody's had any type of, um, if anybody's had a situation where they've been shocked, right? You become frozen. Mm -hmm in that, in that place, yeah. right? So now, we're talking about people who had, had created devices 
right? They had created devices, and then they used these devices in order to keep us frozen, right? When they talk about um, um, Iron Maiden and stuff like that, <coughs> right? When they talk about, um, you know, guillotines and things, things that, you know, you, you can't even fathom, burn people at the stake and stuff like that while they're alive and all that, just because they sit at their moors? Just because they, they, they got a turban? Just because they, um, you know, have, have certain knowledge that somebody else doesn't have, and then they, they be, be classified as heretic or whatever like that. They be classified as, um, what did they say during, um, when, they were, when the pilgrims were murdering the so-called Indians and all that, um, that they're pagans or whatever like that, because they don't believe in Jesus and the cross and stuff, though they're pagan, we need to do something about them. Yeah. Right, burn somebody at the stake. Let everybody watch. You know, during slavery, everybody's watching. The guys hanging from the trees and stuff like that. All these things created being frozen in this mindset that you know, hundred years, two hundred years, three hundred years later, yeah. people still can't yeah. grasp. I said about killing you, so I got talk far. What's they the sense? They talk, but me go keep dead, so I open my mouth. Exactly. And I died to one. Right? So there's a... There was an article online by Eve Lorgan. The Fundamentals of Trauma-Based Mind Control. The reason why, oh, look up um, um, disassociation as well. The reason why disassociation is important to mind control is because the human mind is more susceptible to hypnotic command in these trance states. Disassociation is also a survival skill of great value in response to trauma and abuse. Frequent traumas which split the mind of a child before the age of six will produce multiple personality states. This is also known as dissociative identity disorder. This is one reason why programming must be done in early childhood and in some cases infancy and in, ut in, in utero. It is known that trauma-based personality splits remain isolated in the mind better than hypnotic-based mind splits. Right? So trauma-based personality splits. So a trauma-based personality split is when you have individuals that say they're black. At the same time, they say they're African. At the same time, they say that they're colored. At the same time, they say that they're Negro. At the same time, they say that they're nigger. Then the same time, they say they're a minority. What the hell is this? Now remember, this is one individual, right? This is not. This is not different people thinking like this. This is one person's concept, right? They're, they're minority. Then they're gonna say that they're niggas, and then they're gonna say that they're gods, right? They're gonna say that they're you know, original man, right? And then the list goes on and on and on, right? <laughs> Once the victim is systematically traumatized through various methods, which may include ritual abuse, programming is anchored in each individual trauma. These dis dissociated traumas are linked These dissociated traumas are linked to hypnotic programming commands and scripts. Right? How do we become black? Some guy had a song or whatever like that. Yeah. Telling us that we're that and we're proud and stuff like that. Yeah. Everybody jumped on it. Yeah. Right? What do they do? They use the music programming. Music, yeah. They use the music. The music is why everybody jumped on it. Yeah. Not because of what you said. Yeah, they use the music. The music made them jump on Choo -choo. it. Right? 
How do we say African? We'll just put American here. Mm. Right? Another guy who was tied to another guy whose birthday is tomorrow, right? That day backed his position just on the strength that he knew this guy that they respected. Right? Martin Luther King. They held him in high honors. But his right hand man made this term for them. And then they ran with him. They called themselves that today, thinking that because it says African in there, that's some stuff tying them to back then. When it ain't tying them to back then, it's actually making them be the same thing with the property that we're talking about. Right? And then also too when you clap when you take a dad off and you put Canadian there, it's the same same idea. Right? Master. Um, right, colored. Um, Nobujwali taught us that colored is anything painted, varnished, dyed, whatever like that. Walls colored, sweaters colored, chairs colored, yeah. shoes colored. So only things are colored. Human yeah. beings yeah, can't be no. colored. So as soon as they classify themselves as this, then they, they got themselves trapped, right? And again, remember that, that these things are based in hypnotic mind control. These things are based on repetition. You hearing this over and over and over again. You're colored, you're black, you're yeah. red, you're black. Going, off, going through the list, yeah. right? Remember, the real identity is never mentioned. <laughs> so, so you're constantly in a place of, n of not knowing. Yeah. You're constantly in a place of guesswork. Because as soon as you start researching all these, which we never do, right? You realize that, oh, well, it can't be that because, you know, that's an adjective. Can't be that because that's two continents. Can't be that because that only relates to thing. Can't be that because I don't even speak this language or whatever, yeah. right? Can't be that because we're the majority on the planet. Can't be that because that only applies to royalty. This doesn't apply to regular, no. average individuals, right? Can't be that because that's a transitive verb. You know what I mean? You could probably be this, but yeah. you know that's not really an identity yeah, that somebody's yeah, yeah, gonna yeah. call themselves. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? This is just something that they throw out there because they don't know what else to say, but it's the closest thing to tie them to who they are, right? Oh, and um, it was um, this this it was dissociation. D I S S O C I A T I O N, not disassociation. Dis dissociation. So dissociate. Yeah. Or uh, dissociate. Yeah. Latin. Yeah. Dissociere. Uh, verb transitive to separate, disunite. Chemically to break up into constituent parts. Dissociation the noun. So uh, I guess dissociation is not in there, but dissociate. And, uh, to separate, disunite, or chemically to break up into constituent parts. Right? So, as soon as they start adopting all these things, right, they can't make the claim that we're united. Because everybody's not calling themselves all of this at one time. Some say this, some say this, some say this, some say this, some say this and this, some say this and this. You know what I mean? Some say, well, I'm not even gonna call myself that because that only applies to whatever is in the sky or whatever, right? These dissociated traumas are linked to hypnotic programming commands and scripts. When the traumatic memories linked in with the programming are walled off with amnesia from the host personality, the traumatized split is also known as the newly created alter alter personality. Alter personalities are created according to the programmer's needs, while the host personality is unaware of the traumatic memories and alters who hold the memories. The alter personality can be called up to the front of the mind via codes or specific cues that the programmer knows and be trained to do a variety of functions. The alter personality can be called up to the front of the mind. So the alter personality right now that our people 
are convinced is themselves is black. If worse comes to worse, they're gonna go to this. Mm -hmm. I would. If, 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 the, if, the, <laughs> if the going gets That's rough, the, yeah, the let's just be black. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? like we, we, can, we can get by being black. Even though, you know, again, when, when they talk about um, the programmer setting this, setting this thing up, right? They change this. This is the same thing like um, what Ross Ben was talking about with the... Um, Mandela project. project, right? That this is really an adjective, but they'll say that it's a noun. No, yeah, so that the people can identify with it as a per, as who they are, yeah. right? No different than when they say white, right? Again, it's an adjective, and then Europeans know that so they, never, they never say they're white. They say German, French, French yeah. Scottish, yeah. Irish, blah, blah, blah. they go yeah, down they the list of them. They, they never, never denationalize themselves. They never do. Right? But again, if, if we're adopting this program of black, then there has to be an equal or opposite yeah. to this. Yeah. Right? But then if, if all this, if this is based on an adjective that you know, in the in the, the Spike Lee Malcolm X when he, when you're in prison and then he read all the stuff, you know what I mean? And then they try to make it like, you know, well, you know, well, black is everything negative and white is everything right, and then why are they? But really, the lesson was etymology. It wasn't what the what the definition was. Yeah. It was really an etymology lesson that he was being taught, right? So as soon as you start going into this program of of black. Right? The, the, the personality, which is all the meanings behind this, now come into play. So you say black, you're gonna realize that you're doing, you know, negative stuff. As soon as you start, as soon as you go there, as soon as you say that as identity, now you're taking on the, um, the definition as who you are. Just go look at anybody who calls yourself black. Look at their conditions that they live in. Mm -hmm. And then look at people who don't call themselves yellow and brown and whatever, and then look at their conditions. And you realize that there's, a, there's, a, 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 there, there's something not being told to certain people, right? All programming is, is, all programming is, is anchored upon some type of trauma. All programming. Right now, they have, um, right now the thing is, the programming that they got right now, that's the program now, trap music. Right? Keyword. <laughs> rap music, trap, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's that's the thing right now. Yeah. So now there's this little brother I know who um he does producing and stuff like that. And um he was in one of our programs when um when he just started producing, right? So I talked to him, I seen him um Thursday or Friday or something like that. He's still doing his producing thing, you know what I mean? Well, you know, I know that you don't really, you know, because they're you know, the trap music or whatever, but I'm incorporating, you know, stuff that I'm learning from listening to DJ Premier, Pete Rock, um, um, Diamond D, um, who was the, Steve Stout, like he's, he's naming producers from our era that he's incorporating into this. Right? Which you're not hearing the other ones. They just have this thing going on, on, a, on a loop for people. And again, when you look at the individuals who are back in this, as far as the, the new age, you know what I mean? Um, well, they're young people. Let them do their own thing and stuff like that. They're making up their own whatever like that. It's programming. Yeah. 
to keep the young people in that in that low vibratory frequency yeah. where um, anything goes. They do anything. They do whatever. <laughs> He's young. Put on a skirt, skirt and all that stuff. Do anything. Yeah. 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 Put on you know, skirt. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> they just do whatever. It doesn't even matter. Sure. Sure. There's, there's no there's no line for them. <laughs> Guys have um, beads and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Dye their hair and all that stuff. Anything. Dudes. Right? So the programming is anchored upon some type of trauma. Why are they doing all that stuff? Because going right back to 1492 and all these things that they did to these same Asiatics who are the return of those people that are now suffering trauma and now they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't have any type of reference point of reality. All their reference points are based on fiction. All their reference points are based on um, you know, like um, we were saying, uh, I was talking with a sister earlier today. We were talking about how um, Brother D. Brad, David Farrell, if you've never seen um, his, his presentations, they're on YouTube called Confessions of a BET Producer. Thank you. Right? Where um, this brother used to work at BET from its inception. Realized that, hold on a second, something's, something's not right here because stuff's changing up. Not how, you know, we don't have the same power that we had as, you know, video man. We can't just play certain songs anymore. They're telling us that we can't play that. True. You can't put certain things out. You can't let, you know, why not? Well, you know, whatever reason they made up. And then, um, Cousin Jeff, I think his name is, came out and said, oh, well, people are stupid. Like, why are we going to give them real information? We're not going to give them truth. They're not even going to get what's going on. We're just going to give them BS because they're not even ready for the truth or whatever like that. And then that just spiraled into what we see being TV in today. Yeah. Right? The, 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 um, when, when the trauma is recognized, <clears throat> when the trauma is recognized, you can do something about it. Right? That's why they tell people who are traumatized, talk about it. You get raped or whatever, talk about it. It's to somebody. Yeah. Because you can't pen, if, if you pen that up, it's gonna fester into something. You know what I mean? It's gonna turn into something that you don't want. It's gonna turn into you being in this little shallow place or you, in this little hole somewhere that you can't get out of. But if you talk about it, the more you bring it up, the more you express that this has happened to me, the easier it is to let go of the trauma behind it. Right, so if the trauma initially was the Inquisition, then the solution is to talk about the Inquisition. But instead they talk about slavery. But who knows who was enslaved, which individuals were enslaved, which individuals were not enslaved. Because anybody who thinks that the entire heritage of the people of black, black people of the Western Hemisphere was slavery, then you have no concept of what kind of industrial power that would require. Like you're speaking way out of your, out of your expertise because as bad as, as, as it is for a one man to control or own another human being, that was not, it simply was not to the extent that, it, that people might assume. And, you know, if, you really, if you're really a business person, you're really about, you're an intelligent person, then you really have to look at it and realize that to set up that industry to that level would have meant, you know, you control the people anyway. Right. So you might as that they, they might as well have taken over the whole world at that point, but there is nobody taking over the world like that. Well, the extent of you the know, trauma. You're free now because you were free before. Yeah, but the extent <laughs> of the trauma, like you just said, you're free now. You were free before. Is that word first? Or well, this was the first person, this first black person to do this, the first black person to do that, first black person to say this first black person to go here, go there, whatever. They're not telling a lie. That is the first black 
person to do something of that magnitude. So you just got to read between the lines. And the trauma behind it is nobody's really read between the lines. Right. It's a, like you're considered black now. So yes, you are the first black person to do that. You're not the first ancient Moorish person to do that. You're just the first black person to do that. So it's just wow. reading read between the lines wow. of whatever is being pushed out there. There's a movie out right now. Um, not Hidden Colors? No. Hidden... She, what's the name? I think Hidden Figures or something like that. I think it's the, the it's Hidden Figures. Um, quote unquote, black woman, Moorish woman, mm -hmm. who helped with the with NASA getting a rocket up into space. There, in terms of the trauma, there was this part in the movie where she needed to use a washroom. She ran a half a kilometer to go to a washroom when there was a washroom just around the corner, right next to her office. If that's not trauma, I don't know what it is. Like, it's just every day, a half a kilometer to go to the bathroom. And there's a bathroom right there. Like, I mean, that's traumatic. Like, it, it hits you. Like, it, it's just, and as I said, I was watching the movie and I was like, I mean, it doesn't bother me that she did it. It's just like, you're stupid. Like, the washroom's right there. It's just, just a reality check. Yeah, yeah like, you need to use the bathroom. Just go, hey, the garbage bin right there. Go, like, be in the yard if you want to be in the yard type of thing, right? So, once you get hit with that sense that you're the first to do this or the first to do that, whatever, it's always going to be with you. It's like, okay, I'm the first person to go to college. I'm, I'm the first person to invent this or whatever. It's like... It's a reality check, just like you just said, man. It's like it's, but yeah, go watch the movie. It's a good movie. It's a, number seven comes up in the movie as well too. Yeah. <laughs> just just to add to what he's saying about the, about um, first black, this and first black that, just like Obama, they say, oh, Obama is the first black president. Yeah. <laughs> but realistically, he is the first black president, yeah. even though he doesn't even identify himself as being black. He's yeah. I mean, between the lines. He says he's. Um, Kenyan. Nigerian, he's Kenyan, Kenyan, Kenyan yeah. American. Yeah, and he says it. And he says it. <laughs> but just, but just the the label, the black label, yeah. what everybody's putting on him. He is the first black president in reality, right. but realistically, he is not the first Moorish president, right? We know yeah. that for the United States of America, there was like eight yeah. Moorish presidents. Right before Washington, before George Washington, mm -hmm. yeah. so when it comes to black and the label, then you know what I mean the black the label it only starts at slavery. That's mm -hmm. the history of it. Oh yeah. Wow. So if that's what if that's what you want if you want your history to be slavery history, then yeah, you're black. Yeah, if you right. want to be yeah. before that where you were the, the ruling class, then you're going to identify with your Morris heritage because right. before slavery it was just all about Morris there's no black and then with regard to what Ted was saying um, look up this book Christian slaves Muslim masters where the point being made in the book is don't get caught up with black people were the first slaves this is the whole point don't even go there in your mind that you know, um, there was no other slaves on the planet <laughs> other than dark skinned people, right? So it goes back to the same thing that, you know, um, there, there's, there's, there are certain scripts that were created. And the scripts were created in order to keep people in this mindset of where they want the programmers for them to see themselves. Then it's not on the programmer. It's on the individual who's getting programmed now. There's nothing to do with the programmer at that point. If the programmer throws something out and then the programmee goes and was thrown out by the programmer, now it's not on the programmer. Now, now, they, now they step away a little bit, you know what I mean? Like they might not get the full blow of karmic, yeah, yeah. karmic debt for what they did. Now they might just lose an arm or something yeah, like that, yeah. opposed to getting fully, right? Um, <coughs> A variety of 
scripts may be used, along with specific training for individual alter personalities. This extends into the childhood and, adult, and adulthood of the slave. The idea behind this is to create the perfect slave who can carry out a variety of functions while maintaining secrecy and obedience to the programmers. Such functions may include assassination, espionage, sexual servicing, couriers, photographic, mind file data storage, and even, even psychic abilities. There are other important elements employed in mind, monarch mind control, such as the overlaying of demonic entities through ritual or the power of ancestral generational spirits, which may take, which may, which may make the person very psychic. Many of the monarch, I'm speaking on that, um, so because because they're dealing with with um, something when it, when they talk about programming, they're dealing with something that's not tangible. They're dealing with somebody's mindset that they can't really have and say, okay, we're going to do this with your mind. Or they just put it out and then how, however it goes, it's going to go. The individual who is being um, programmed, depending on the level of programming that they're under, they're going to tap into certain things in their psyche because remember, you're talking about people who are ancient people that are coming in. Now, if you were, if you were an ancient witch doctor, and you come back again, and they try to program you, you might have the ability to, to, you know, use your stuff on the stuff, the program they program you. You could probably use that on somebody else because of whatever. If you were, um, um, if we use, for example. Um, somebody who was anciently connected to holistic health. You might hear them today speaking from that perspective, even though they consider themselves black or whatever, and they really don't know how, how they, like how, how do they, how, how are they um, so easily um, coerced into living a holistic lifestyle? You know what I mean? After being brought up with, you know, pork and uh, uh, going down the line, family did it, grandma did it, whatever like that. But then, you know, chitterlings, they're not even going there. You know what I mean? They end up being outcasts of the family or whatever like that because they have this different mindset than everybody else or whatever, because, which is majority of the people who are quote unquote conscious, cognizant of who they are or coming into this information, they become those people who are the ones that the family's looking at like, that guy, My. that guy has problems. Man. Yeah. He's crazy. What do you mean, the Lord European Jesus My. and stuff like that? What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Trump. Because, Trump. Right? Trump. because it's some, it, when, when you're dealing with, with, with the minds of people, you're not dealing with something tangible that you can actually you know, manipulate at your will. It's, it's, it's an open field, vast field that goes Way down there, way up there, way out there, it doesn't even matter, it's so vast, right? They can eat chicken. Many of the monarch victims are chosen because they have a powerful level of generational spirits within their families who may have practiced black magic for generations. Nowadays, sophisticated scientific technology is also used, such as biochip implants, electroshock drugs, and brainwave, brainwave entertainment systems to lock in hypno-programming more effectively. Real physical trauma is sometimes substituted for virtual reality headgear. So the stuff that they're bringing out now, put on the stuff mm -hmm. and then you could go into some mm -hmm. virtual realm yeah, yeah. Of, of whatever. Keep it again. Nowadays, Sophisticated scientific technology, which also goes into, I was listening to um, some um, um, Manly P. Hall, and he was talking about how people's concept of now we're living in the computer age, it's so good because now we're, you know what I mean, is really creating unemployment because now they're using computers instead of people. Yeah. And people losing jobs because of a computer, mm -hmm. that people thought, oh wow, we're making steps to the whatever, but not really, they were, they were really 
depopulating yeah. Yeah. The, the planet. Because computers everywhere now, yeah. they're coming out with cars driving their self and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Bus Fly. driving itself, so now there's going to be no bus drivers. We'll Tractor that. drive itself, and now you've got people, and, and but what do you do with all these unemployed people now? Like, mm -hmm. what are they going to do? A guy who drove truck all his life goes to work one day and, sorry, um, computer has your job now. Robot. The robot is doing your job. Like, what's that guy going to do? You know what I mean, they never trained him or nothing like that. They even said, hey, uh, you know, in 20 years, we're going to be replacing you with the computer. So make sure you get some extra skills or whatever so you can do stuff with your life. But to that, what he just said, the reason for that is because they've been in detention center to put you in. Right. And uh, to kill you off. They don't want you to... Um, exactly. Uh, they're going to control the population by getting rid of, it, get right. rid of you. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to add as well, that um, you, you said something about frequencies, and um, I know I, I was reading recently that they had um, they have the 432 frequency scale or the music or the, oh, the, the uh, yeah, 432 um, um, hertz hertz yes, yeah, the sir. scale it's that was the original one. Yeah, now I guess whoever the Rothschild whoever it was changed it to 440 yes. to where that frequency or that scale frequency. It's, um, it kind of dumps down your, your okay. vibration of yourself. Right. Yeah. Makes you yeah. think on a, on a lower self vibration. Right. Yes. When before, the 432 scale made you more creative and more you think more on a higher self. Right. 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 And then they're also saying that some of the great artists, mm -hmm. that's some of the reason why they got rid of them, like Jimi Hendrix, yeah. yes. going back yes. on yes. the yes. 32 yeah. scale. Right. Right. And they're like, no, we can't make you start yeah. musically just waking up people with all that even send a message. Especially yeah. when he's on shrooms and all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. <bummer. Okay. laughs> <Okay. laughs> this right? is wild. Okay. And, and again, too, you know, like, like uh, uh, when, when, when they get people to stop thinking, that's how they, they, they're able to do even things like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As soon as the thinking level starts dropping, now you have people able to, um, you know, put, put certain things in a song, a little drum pattern in a song, a little whatever in a song to make, to make it like, you know, um, 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 on, on, that, on that vibration or on that hertz level, that is going to cause the the brainwashing and, and the programming and stuff like that to stick. And once it sticks now, because remember we're dealing with, you know, this is the age of knowing. So not knowing is not an option right now. Yeah. If you choose to not know right now, you're gonna be stuck in some realm that you might not be able to, to get out of when, when it's time to, you know what I mean, actually do something about it. Uh, real, real physical trauma is sometimes substituted for virtual reality headgear, which simulate horrific traumas to quickly split the mind, priming it for programming. Right. So they had, they had, um, you know, first-person video game from here. Right. Now first-person video games put on stuff, and now you're in it now. No, scary. Yeah, like you're in it now, right? Now we're talking about all those, all those games that he brought up, first-person, whether it's the war stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, um, you, you know, we got, My friend has we got the um, Mario Kart and whatever like that. People, you know, play around. You know, we, you know, you play the soccer and stuff like that. And now, you know, you got. The zombie game or whatever. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat or whatever like that. In, in dude, first you know, person for cute. real now. You're <laughs> in it. Like there's a dude right there right now. But, Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> right? But 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 also too that that because of because of, of um this whole computer age or whatever like that, people are desensitized to certain things. So it's 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 acceptable to put on the thing and kill some guy in, in what they're not gonna do that in real life, but they'll definitely, you know what I mean, um, put on that headgear and, and get to work. The important thing to remember is that the powerhouse behind this type of mind control system is demonic and technical. The key freedom lies in deliverance and specific deprogramming therapy and support systems. The key to freedom 
lies in deliverance and specific deprogramming therapy. Right? Deprogramming therapy. So, so again, recognizing that you've been traumatized and the deprogramming is actually, you know, talking about the trauma. You know what I mean? Um, the deprogramming is, you know, take off these social media stuff, read some books or whatever. You know what I mean? You know, cut your cable off for a month and see how your mind's different. You don't even not want to get cable after you cut the cable off for a month. So, I, so it's all about rewash, like uh, rewash the brainwash. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Brainwash. So they right. forget rid of everything when I'm teaching and learn new now. Start fresh. Fresh. More. Right. <laughs> Start fresh. Yeah. Right. Um, any um any questions or comments? So with regard to, um, again, the trauma, just to um, have us have a perspective, um, it's talked about, it's talked about, um, hardly is it brought to the surface um, because there's a program or there's a campaign to keep our people in this mindset of black and, and all that. Um, like Brother Tesbo was saying, they're going to bring up slavery, which is um, post-inquisition. They're going to bring up slavery. They're going to talk about you know, um, these um, actions by so-called you know, slave masters or whatever like that. You know, actions by slave masters to make sure that our people stay deaf, dumb, blind, or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. But in the Kunta Kente movie, he's yeah. talking about Asalaamu Alaikum and, and, you know, things relative to the fact that individuals who were so-called in quote-unquote slavery came out of quote-unquote Muslim that were dark-skinned people. Islamic people that were dark-skinned people, not some pale people or whatever like that, right? And when they talk about the Inquisition, they always fail to address um, some of these things here that we're going to talk about. Um, 15, say 15, 20, we're going to go 15, 20 to, 15, 20 to about 15, Seven. At the time of the discovery, at the time of the discovery and conquest of the New World, Cardinal Adrian Utrecht. Uh, for the people online, Adrian U T R E C T. Adrian Utrecht was the Inquisitor General of Spain. He appointed Pedro de Cordoba as inquisitor, as inquisitor for the West Indies in 1520. He also had inquisitorial powers in Mexico after the conquest but did not have the official title. When Juan de Zamaraga became the first bishop of Mexico in 1535, he also had these duties, right? So the bishop had the duties of in inquisitor. Juan Z-U-M-A-R-R-A-G-A. -R -R one of the one of Bishop Zumaraga's first acts as episcop as Episcopal Inquisitor was the 1536 persecution of Nahua man. Baptized 
right? So this was it. this was his his free name, and then he was baptized and renamed Martin. With the indigenous name of Ocelot, O-C-E-L-O-T-L. -E he was persecuted as a Nahul, Nahuali, N-A-H-U-A-L-L-I, a priest with supernatural powers, as well as heretical dogmatism and concubinage. The trial record of his case was published in 1912. Scholars have been attracted to this early case persecuting a Nahua holy man. Another of Bishop Zumaga's inquisitorial persecutions was that of Nahua Lord Texcoco, T-E-X-C-O-C-O, -C -O, who took the name of Carlos upon baptism. The trial record was published in 1910 and is the main source for this high profile case. Don Carlos was likely a nephew of Nezahu Akoto, N E Z A H U A L C O Y O T L. Zumaraga accused this lord of reverting to worship the old gods and following a trial with indigenous witness and Don Carlos' own testimony. The Texcocan lord was declared guilty. He burned at the stake on November 30th, 1539. However, this persecution was not considered prudent by either the Spanish secular or religious authorities and Zamaruga himself was reprimanded for it. So, when we look at, at the trauma based um, the trauma based programming that some of these people in, in the Inquisition outside of Spain were implementing a lot of the stuff they were doing the, the, the monarchy wasn't even down with it they were doing this on their own free will they were doing this because they themselves had that um um, blessing from God or whatever to do what it is that they did even though the blessing really came from the monarchy the blessing really came from the people who were in the rulership but you know because they were quote unquote bishops and all this stuff holy men or whatever like that they took it on themselves to say you know what um, you know we're just doing this now right? For a number of reasons, persecution of the Indians, quote unquote, for religious offenses was not actively pursued. For, now remember, there that's another one of the brands. That's another one of the of the um, um, personalities that were implemented. Classifying the indigenous people as Indians. So as soon as you start saying that they're Indian, then that means they're not indigenous because this is not Indian. So you take them out of who they really are, right? Just like they said, priest with supernatural powers, throw some water on him, call him Martin, Carlos, and all that stuff. When they know that these people were high priests, supernatural people, these were people who, you know, um, communities look to for you know, spiritual guidance, you know what I mean, whatever like that. Um, first of all, since many native practices had parallels in Christianity, and since this quote-unquote paganism was neither the Judaic or Islamic faiths that the Spanish Christians had fought so zealously against, ecclesiastical authorities opted instead to push native practices in Christian directions. Also, many of the friars sent to evangelize the native people became protectors of them from the extremely cruel treatment at the hands of secular authorities. This would contrast sharply with treatment of European heretics later in the colonial period. However, as a practical matter, it was probably not prudent to pursue such rigid, rigid enforcement in an environment where natives 
where native people vastly outnumbered European conquerors who also needed to rule through indigenous intermediaries. Again, however, as a practical matter, it was probably not prudent to pursue such rigid enforcement in an environment where native peoples vastly outnumbered the European conquerors who also needed to rule through indigenous intermediaries. Now they were, they had this um, article on, or a, a, a image on how the, how the, um, the minority ruled the many. And the, the example that they used was sheep. And they had, um, So they had all this right here were sheep, right? All this were sheep, and then that fence right here, and then the opening right here, right? And they had all the sheep going toward this fence or this gate to get out of this impound or whatever. But the fence. The fence stopped here. So the fence was up to here, all this is open. All this is open. And then all this is sheep. And then all the sheep are going to this thing, but no sheep are coming over here, and no sheep are coming over here. All the sheep were going toward this little thing right here, right? Um, ruling through indigenous intermediaries. So they were saying that in, in the flock, in the flock of sheep, there's always selected sheep. There's always selected sheep who the shepherd is going to use to control all the other sheep. True. Mm. Right? Once they get those sheep controlled, then all the other sheep are just going to follow those sheep. Sure. They don't even have to deal with these ones. Mm -hmm. All they do is tell these sheep what to do, direct those sheep, and then those sheep are going to make sure all the rest of them do what they're supposed to do. So this is the same thing when we go back to when, when we look at um, the, whole, the whole concept of the slavery and them... Um, having the overseer, right? They have the individuals telling people, no, don't hurry a tub in, or don't follow her or whatever. You're gonna get you killed by a slave master. <laughs> don't listen to her. Because as soon as you start listening to her, now you're becoming the majority, right? Same thing with um, Sankofa. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Frederick Douglass, all these people who had the mindset of, we know that we're the majority. <coughs> There's only five slave masters here. With all these slaves or whatever like that, we're not, we're not trying to take over this plantation. <laughs> now you got all these slaves or whatever, one guy on a horse, <laughs> right? <laughs> Telling people, nah, you can't whip people and all that stuff. And, and 10 of these guys didn't say, hold on a second. There's more of us. There's more of us. Let's just, let's all just rush this guy. Yes, yes. <laughs> let's all just rush this one guy. Right? And then let's go to the house, kill everybody in the house or whatever like that, take over the plantation. And then trust me, that word will spread like wildfire. Because all they need to do is, you know, take that same horse, put one guy on it, just like they did with this thing. Put one guy, send him out, go, go tell everybody else that we're actually majority on the plantation, let's take over this stuff. Right? It didn't happen, right? Because they had their individuals who were working to make sure that the power doesn't doesn't shift, right? So as soon as they they can they can get the other ones traumatized enough, because that's you know the 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 overseer was always the most muscular guy, the strongest guy, whatever like that. If he's 
you're gonna be the one giving lashes, then I'm not even trying to get no lashes. I'm just gonna chill right over here because that guy, no, no way I'm getting lashes from Hulk. Right, it's not happening, right? Birdie, you had something? You had a, a comment? I was gonna say that today they use the actors and musicians to people to basically keep the population in the Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Same yeah. game. Yeah. Same play. Yeah. Right? Use the individuals who have so-called um, <coughs> recognized status yeah. by the by the rulership, and then the people are automatically going to be down with whatever yeah. it is that they say. There are certain cars to drive to, and they have a lot of money, so right. they're always going to be leaving. I want to be like it. It look good. <coughs> The amount of stuff they tried to pull with Hillary, all of the yeah. Yeah. musicians was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Like, it's so obvious. Right? This is part of the reason why the Inquisition was not formally established in New Spain. Until, make sure you do your research on New Spain so you realize that these individuals, you know, they, they were doing everything from mind. Like, they weren't doing things physically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Going somewhere and say, okay, this is this is new whatever. They just send a telegram. Hey, you know that place over there that you guys thought was whatever? <laughs> That's not that. That's really whatever. Oh, he's, that guy, he was a shaman or whatever. No, his name's Carlos now. He's baptized. He's, he's a Christian. <laughs> Why you guys, you know what I mean? Well, what's the problem? That's, that's, that, that's your boy. If your boy is going to be down with Christianity, then why are you guys pretending like you can't be down with this? I mean, um, however, this is not to say that the Inquisition-like tactics were never used after the Nahua Lord Don Carlos execution. Antagonism, which the Spanish led to the Maya resistance in the Yucatan in 1546 to 1547. The failure of this movement prompted more aggressive evangelization with the Franciscans finding out that despite their efforts, most of, much of the traditional beliefs and practices survived. They, under the leadership of Fray Diego de Landa, decided to make an example of those who they considered backsliders without regard to proper legal formalities. Large numbers of people were subjugated to torture, and as many of the Maya sacred books as could be found were burned. And again, we go back to the thing that even though they did all that, even though they went through all these measures to burn books, you know what I mean, um, kill people, whatever like that, the resurrection of, whoa, Christianity is not real, and, you know, Council of Nicaea and all this stuff that they tried to keep hidden is back on the surface. People again now are coming into the fact of knowing some type of truth, mm -hmm. right? And again, once you start vibrating, just like brother was saying with the hurts, once you start vibrating on the level of truth, then you're going to attract that to you as well. It's not just that you have this in your mind, now you know. It actually is, you have this in your mind, now you know, and you're actually putting it out. Bring it to life. And then it's being picked up by others who are on the same frequency and then... You know what I mean? We're having having that unified that unified thought, All right? Um, Two thirty one. Any um, questions? We're gonna hit up. We only got another question. Well, two uh, questions, but we're gonna hit up another question. But I, I this um, guy from India, and he, he, I was talking to one of my people beside him, but that person is lost. He's yeah. gone. You don't get it. So when he leave, I said to the Indian guy, did you know, because he was saying, no, the Indian guy was saying, like, black is just uh, whatever, it doesn't mean anything. So I told him, um, did you know that they change your name and give us different name? He said, no. I said, yes. So I took out my bank card and I showed it to him. Then I took out my Morsha identity card and showed it to him. He said, I never know that. Yeah. So you see how many of these people are on us Millions too, from India, right. don't even know that. Yeah. Why is this happening to these black people yeah. that they, yeah. they don't even, they didn't know right. that they changed your name. Right. 
You don't know yeah. that. All these people from Pakistan, they don't all know. these places, they don't know nothing about yeah. the world of Africa. No. And, 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 they say they don't know. and then, then remember too that, you know, even even there, they have the same issue of black, white light on the top, yeah, 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 on yeah, the yeah, bottom yeah, yeah. or whatever like that. Yeah. And they have their own Trump. version of mm -hmm. psychological yeah. trauma yeah. that yeah. different than ours. Yeah. 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 Different than ours. Yeah. 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 But as soon as we start, you know, you show them fesses and stuff like that, turbans or whatever like that, we start telling them, oh yeah, Hindustan versus India, Ceylon versus Sri Lanka. You know, India is a corporation, that's not really a country and stuff like that. But that, same guy, start, that same guy asked me to before if I could adapt him. Yeah. I don't know where he come up with the idea of knowing that he could be adapted. Yeah. He asked me. Right. And then my people, right there, is like, nothing to do with what I'm saying. Right, right, right. And he goes to him and asks me, could he adapt me? Yeah. Because he knows that mm -hmm. you're really the father. Yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> but can I say something? Yeah, bro. You, when you say adapt, you saw these Caucasian people go to like yeah. the country and take away these kids yeah. and people yeah. and bring them here and then have an income off them. Yeah. And be rich and powerful. Because that's all I see going on. Yeah. With these yeah. so called Canadian no, white no, or whatever. You, you, we can look at it. No, you can no. look at it like that. Keep going around the world. And take you can look at it like that, and then we could also look at it the way Pope looks at it. That if I have a little boy, and I sleep with a little boy, it might not be sexual. Because everything's about energy right now. It's not about, you know what I mean, molesting children. It's about sleep next to them and suck their energy. So when you see um, whoever actor or whatever say that they brought somebody back from, you know, Madonna, yeah. adopt two Asiatic children or whatever, yeah. have them massaging her feet and stuff yeah. like that, have them doing the stuff. Black like, how is she doing that? She can't do that, blah, blah, blah. But, mm. you know, you go, you look at Madonna's video, she got Moorish figures <coughs> in her videos. She has black Jesus. You know what I mean? She's not, it's not really what is being, portrayed, you know what I mean? Because they know that the, the, the dominant gene is the melanated gene. They know that, you know, like if you look at somebody like Madonna, you know, she knows probably she can't, you know, have no children, nothing like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's not gonna let no Asiatic go up in her or whatever, like except Kane, you know, Big yeah. Daddy Kane got his little, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? But um, they know that it's about energy. It's not about physical beings. It's about vibration. Because these people are dealing with, you know, a cult. They're dealing with, you know what I mean? Black magic, white magic, orange magic, purple magic, whatever. And a lot of a lot of their a lot of their um, spiritual connection is really a disconnect. They really have no connection. Mm -hmm. The only way that they can get that connection is to have quote unquote God next to them. Yeah, to us. Right? You know, it's just like it's just like with um with um like we were saying with the Pope. You know what I mean? The Pope's not praying to no European Madonna and stuff like that. No. He has Asiatic women on his wall that he prays to, bows down to and all that. He's not they're not dealing with it's a woman. First, it's a woman, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Second, she's Asiatic. It's not some European, right? That's why. That's why you know with all the all the BS that they, you know, they they say with the Pope, the Pope did this, Pope did that. Yeah, that might be true. You know what I mean? That might be true. But if He's going in secret chambers and he's praying to an Asiatic woman. He come out here and say whatever he wants. But if he's going to chambers praying to an Asiatic woman, then you gotta give folks, you gotta give him some applause. Even though they're doing the messed up stuff and whatever like that, but you know what? He knows who God is. At least he knows the truth. Right? You know, and I know in no way condoning the BS that they do. But the, the, the semi-right things that they do, you know, we'll give that little acknowledgement, little recognition, right? 
Hey, um, I know there's some new people. I don't know if you got questions and stuff like that. Feel free to <laughs> present those so we can help you with, you know, getting rid of some of the trauma, the psych trauma. So you're talking about nationalizing, right? Mm. People recognizing who they are and saying that black is not a nationality and African American. But when you use the word more, isn't that also taking on something that somebody told you as well? Well, we'll we, we're going to use um, um, Brother, the good elder Dr. Ben wrote multiple books and stuff like that, has all these classes and stuff. Um, when people usually bring that up, we tell them, go debate him. Don't debate us. Go debate Dr. Ben, because he said that Africans were Moors, that they called themselves that. That's not Europeans put that name on us. No. Right? Africans called themselves Moors, yeah. is what Dr. Ben taught. So, doctor, I mean, you know, if we look up to Dr. Ben and all that stuff, if we honor him, then maybe we should go with what he's saying, opposed to what other people well, yeah. are saying. I'm to that, that, yeah. that, we're, that we were told that we're, you know what I mean? European yeah. is the one who named us yeah, Moors yeah. and yeah. all that type of stuff. That's, right. shit, that's, not, right. that's not real. If we ask Dr. Ben, you know what I mean? You know? Uh, yeah, bro. And then um, I always build a better call on this too. I always go back to um, like c certain things that we don't um, maybe you can't study or you don't what think of studying, it? but <laughs> just the sounds of words are really important too, right? Like to say the word more, um, it doesn't require teeth. You don't you don't have to be an adult. You know, if you can teach that word to your infant child, sure. then there's something proper about that word. There's something native and natural about that word. First word, mama. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So, that's, you know, you, simple things like that, just, they're common sense. You don't really need to research anything. But, you know, you do your research at the same time, right? But those things, those are what all words are grounded in. They're grounded in the practicality of being able to teach it to a child or the practicality of what happens when, um, you know, children lose their, their heritage and then they have to re-equip re their language, you know what I mean? Or a catastrophe happens and they have to re-equip their language, you know, the fall of Babylon. So that's how you get, you know, different branches of languages. But they start at a root whereby, you know, certain things have to be able to be um, shared with certain individuals like children, young children. And, and and let's just say let's just say the European did call us more. Let's just say, right? Um, when we check the the reference points historically of Moors versus all the other stuff that we had on the board, I'll be more before I'm any of those stuff. Even if European made it up and called us that. Yeah. I'ma still say more before black. Negro, colored, African, whatever, Canadian, whatever. Like, I'm not even going to go there because I know that there's no historical relevance to those that, terms. Yeah, yeah. Whereas with Moors, we at least have a 700 year history. Oh, no that, with, which, is, which is documented fact, everybody around the world knows there's still more stuff that they built 700 years ago that's still around today. Find me some black stuff that some black whatever built that's still around today that we can point to and say okay well you know well the blacks did that so let's just gravitate there's nothing in nothing. existence there's not even a slave ship that these guys sure. could, could, could could show so to connect what's your to. point of reference then that the 700 years because they say they say um um 1492 was when they kicked the moors out right um but there's no, there, in any, any Asiatic history that our people tie themselves to is pre those 700 years. Because after the 700 years, it's slave, it's slave history. There's no, there's no, there's nothing of, of um, significance after 1492 
relative to our people as far as historically only slave history and then if we go if we go from here backward so we go from here we go to slave history then we go to 700 years of history of these people civilizing the world not just Europe or whatever civilizing the world and then prior to that then there's history of you know the other Asiatic stuff but you know we're taught that if we recognize ourselves today as a fallen people, that we lost in the European, stole our stuff and all that stuff, True. then the only way we're going to rise is if we call ourselves the name that we fell as. More. And we didn't fall as any other name but more. So we should say, go there first, deal with the 700 years, and not then go past that. But they want to they wanna jump over that go to Egypt and Kush and uh, stuff like that, where they don't even have nothing to prove that even that stuff exists. We have 700, you know, 1492 was yesterday. And then the 700 years on top of, on top of that. Um, Brother Osiris and Brother Kenton and well, Yeah, um, I just want to add to, <clears throat> um, to, the, to the word more, right? So in the dictionary, any like, um, any unabridged dictionary, it has the meaning of mores, it has one meaning, two meaning, and a third meaning. Like, if everybody kind of know what more means, right? Basically, but the third meaning of more, it says here that more is a wasteland or um, a tract of land overrun with heath, a soil which consists of poor earth lighting, uh, marsh, or Pasty, I can't really read because it's from I I, I the copy, but it's just saying it's related to land. That's that, that's like the third entry of it because there's one entry saying words are Africans, bad people, so so called bad people, and then the third so uh, meaning two more is land, right? So if and if you, if you go to the word land, if you look it up in the dictionary as well, one of the um, one of the meaning of land is. It says, in most general sense, any ground, soil, earth, whatsoever, as meadow, pasture, woods, moors, M-O-O-R-S, is related to land. So just as, uh, just on a level of just connecting it, like on a scholarship level, or, or just like on a, um, how would you say, on a level of just connecting it to the, the moors is connected to the land automatically just by, um, history, history, naturally, right. naturally, yeah. naturally, right? And, and, so and then also right. connected to water, because yes, the dock of boat is called mooring. Yes, exactly. And then that's because the only people with boats were moors. Because you know why did Egyptians have boats? How come mooring is not relative to Egyptians? Phoenicians had boats. How come docking a boat has nothing to do with Phoenicians? Why is it termed mooring? It could. You know, they, they can use all these other people in the past to, to make the connection because we've been had boats, but they use more, right? Because, you know, the, 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 the most recognized, acknowledged, whatever name is that. Not right? black. But can um, just to add on um, to um, as far as the researching aspect, um, it's like, um, Tracking your your mother's maiden name and finding out that you are um, your mother's child. So when you do the research, you find out that what it is to be a more when we fell. So we got to pick up from where we left off, which was the fall. Um, if you, end, you end up finding out that um, you know, especially in the Bible, that you know when we talk about. Um, the word um, the earth and all that stuff, it deals with our body. And just like Osiris was saying, um, tied into the land, tied into water. So being a more, truly being a more, your nationality is tied to who you are on a spiritual level and on a physical level. And the fact that, um, you know, when you um, hear the, the term earth in the Biblios Helio text, the Bible, it relates to your body being the earth. And the fact that it's part of the earth, and therefore, you know, anything pertaining to a more, you know, pertains to your own lineage. 
So you got to keep that in mind that, you know, um, we fell. You know, we claim to be descendants of slaves. But however, if you go beyond that, as um, Rancho Kujo was saying, um, you find out you're more than that. Like, more than that. And then when you look at the word more, you know, and you flip it around, you see the word room. So it's kind of like you have the space to extend when you start finding out about yourself. You don't just stick to one geographic location or one um, experience in history where you were told that you're a descendant of a slave. So by doing that, they take you away from everything else that you came from. So the only logical thing to do is to go back to where you fell and start following the breadcrumbs. So I would just wanted to respond just to your um, wondering about whether or not the, the term more came from the European. But when I look at it, even if I didn't have any um, historical background on where the word came from or anything like that, we do know it went through its transitions as a result of what the European did. They took it from more to black or more to black. So we didn't call ourselves black, but why would they change it to get us to think of ourselves as black if they gave it to us in the first place? You know what I mean? So you have to sort of wonder about that as well. Yeah. And then also, they were, they were just to call us black from the beginning. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Because on, on that note as well, um, you can look up, um, you can look, get this brother's book, Jose Pimienta Bay, um, Our Fellow Children in the New World. And then he, he made that point in his book that if, if the point was, to um, you know, d destroy the history and and you know um, and enslave us and, and do all these things in order to defeat us. What was there had to be some type of further further um, um, actions on their part if they're going to say also change our name from Mars to something else because we're already defeated mm -hmm. at that point. What's, what, what, what made them go further to say, well, don't even call them Moors. Call them black Moors. And then they said, okay, well, don't even call them that. Call them black, Negro, Morisco, making up stuff to call us. Why would they even go so far as to take away that name that they or that people claim they named us? If they named us that, then what, like, why take it away? You know what I mean? But... That would be a good, that's a good reference as well. Anybody else? Yeah, so <clears throat> I also want to refer to um, the meaning of more from a, from a, law, from a, a law perspective. Here, I'm just trying to find it. Um, it says that, um, yeah, it says more from a lot, um, uh, from Black's Law Dictionary. It says, an officer of the Isle of Man who summons the courts for several sheddings. The office is similar to the English bailiff of a hundred. So they're basically saying a more, one more is equal to a hundred English bailiffs, right? And just to, I could testify to that because um, on Friday the 6th, I went to court for a pretrial. Um, you know, bro Brother Duar came with me as well. And just to make it short, when I went into their administrative office, like I didn't use a lawyer, I, I, did, um, I represented myself, I, and, um, and I stand on my square, and the whole, like the whole charade was that they threw out, I had like a, say a weed charge, they threw that out, and my fail to appear, which I had a doctor's letters for, they basically wanted to keep, keep that, where, when I could trump that, and bring, send me back Bring back for another court date. So I'm like, I'm not coming back because that's just stupid because I could not automatically beat all the charges now. When you throw away the charge, that's more hard to beat. And the funny thing was that they tried to maybe take off my fez, which I didn't. Um, they tried to give me back my, um, my documents that I filed to them, my writs. They tried to give that back to me. And I basically just got fed up and told them that charges, I'm, these charges are dismissed, right? Case closed. 
and they didn't say nothing. I said, for the record, this charge is dismissed. And I walked out the court. And the bailiff was standing right at the door. Mm -hmm. I walked right past the bailiff. <laughs> and, and I just realized that that was like the power of a hundred bailiff right there. Like, her. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but to make a long story short, they came outside and said, oh, please come back in, or they're just going to file a warrant, and we're just going to resolve this now. I'm like, I'm not coming back, so I'll resolve it. He said he was going to get you some um, bench warrant. Yeah. So he told him, go ahead, they are right out here. <laughs> you don't have to come look for us. The guys are here in uniform. Tell yeah. them now to do what they have to do. Because I'm not coming back another day. Because I saw the, I saw the, their game, the fraud. their play, yeah. the fraud. Mm -hmm. So I mean, come back on the charge, I want to be anyways, just for their financial gain. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they call the doctors to make it look like they're doing me a favor. Mm -hmm. yeah. They said, oh yeah, we verified the letter a year from you. Know, well, realistically, that was going to be the outcome anyways, but that's just their fraud. And, and just, just, but the fact that I was able to just to walk out of court and dismiss the charge and nobody said nothing. Yeah. And I was like, I would say, I was still being, I was still using, um, I wasn't being rude or anything. I was still using manners and stuff. But the fact is that a regular nigga can't do that. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> I thought I'm a lawyer, like mm. basically. And then, and then remember the whole thing about, about, um, you know, take off your fares and wear bench warrants and all that stuff. Mm. It's the same psychological stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the same Inquisition stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so oh, j just like, just else. like right. where the ancients returned, there, their people return yeah. that have the same mindset yeah. that. Yeah. You guys aren't really Moors, you're black guys. Yeah, black guys. yeah. Until, that's why I try to uh, Until you stand yeah. up for it and you prove it to them yeah. in, you know what I mean, words, deeds, yeah. certain things like that, it lets them know that, okay, maybe he might be a real one. That's a relearning though, right? Exactly. exactly. To add to everything. Complete relearning. To add to that, while we were there, I see we see so-called black people coming in looking for prosecutor, or what do you call it? The, um, no, no, the one that comes to the council. council. Duty council. Yes. And this Chinese guy now, see us, started to talk, talk to us. At the end, the Chinese man said, Man, you gotta call me. I need to know more what you said to me. <laughs> Look at this paper, Canada Trust. The Canada Trust paper? Yeah. Go into his folder, he got a Canada Trust paper. He wrote upon it his name, and he wrote it in Chinese too. He wrote his address for his house, down to postal code, phone number, the address for where he work. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is good, call worker's name, poor call worker's name. <laughs> and, and, no, my, what I did now, I go find a Chinese and I said, could you read this for me? And he said it means the name over here in Chinese. Right. So, this is it. I didn't make it up, I can't ever write Chinese. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Because you know, this, how oh, serious this thing is. Yeah. Our people yeah. Yeah. still sleeping. Yeah. yeah. Right. Still sleeping. And, and and then this this is why too, like, you know, people people take like there's there's certain mores out here that take this as an opportunist perspective. And they they do exactly what oh they good now. Nothing else. They, they, they do exactly what, <laughs> they do exactly what the brothers did, but they're going there to try to recruit people. Yeah. Right? They go in there to try to get people to so so just just like what Brother Noor has, right? They give them their information or whatever like that, then they tell them, yeah, come on down. Then they tell them 500, 600, 5,000 yeah. or whatever like that for papers, get them out yeah. of court and yeah. stuff and whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. When like what you're saying. It's really about the individual getting it right here yeah. before they even talk about claiming stuff and saying stuff and expressing that they are this or whatever like that. No different than anything else that you do. You know what I mean? You're good. You, you should have some type of knowledge of what you're talking about before you start talking. You know what I mean? It would be in, in the best interest of sure. the speaking talking to know what you're talking about. Sure. You know what I mean? And again. You know, once you know what you're talking about, you know, you have, you know, Chinese running up on you and stuff like that. Hindus running up on sure. you. People seeing your fans going, well, let me try it on. Where do you get that? Let me take a picture with you and all that stuff because th that's how real it is. But it's only, you know, it's like what they say. Only the realists feel this. And people who aren't down with this, they, this stuff is over their head. 
they have no clue no. how deep this rabbit yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. No clue. Not they have no dangerous. idea. Right? <laughs> because they, they, you know, and again, that the, the whole psychological trauma thing is is really where the, the them them willing to be ignorant stems from. You know what I mean? Them accepting the fact that, well, you know, um, we are these things that have no legitimacy. We are these things that we can't prove. Like you said, prove to me that you're black. When somebody says they're black, like prove it. Your hair is black. You don't look like your hair. Please <laughs> <laughs> prove to me that you're black. But in your passport, your jacket is remember black. your passport? Well, you don't look like yeah. your jacket. Your passport so your eyes are black, brown. Right. dark brown, dark brown. Right. and they're, bl- they're more look black right. than your skin. <laughs> yeah. Your passport, the document you yeah. to travel. <laughs> look yeah. at it when you go home. Yeah. You see yeah. your eye is dark brown, and right. look at your skin and compare them. Right. Why can't you black? <laughs> right. It's plain in sight, but you gotta look to see. Um, we got, um, there was some back and forth on the, on the bait book a little while ago. And my um, brother sent a question with regard to um, the factions of the Morse science. Well, let me, okay, this email, after reading your dialogue thread with brother Nathaniel McCoy Bay, it was only right that I contact you in love. I'm currently a member of subordinate temple number 19 in Baltimore under Braswell Bay. They are, there are many other factions of Morse science in, ba- in Baltimore but the law placed me here. In my quest for the truth about the history of our movement, what was CMB's connection to Noble Juali and the MSTA? Um, please put me in the direction allow me. So I answered that question by giving him the um, classes that we did on um, Clock of Destiny and More Science Temple. And his second question was, he received his Quran in 1996 from an elder at the Baltimore City Detention Center. I, I, I have had it since, but never paid attention to the seals until now. I attached the images of the seals for your examination. What is your understanding of these seals and the date 5-1-1916? I have asked elders on my end, but the responses aren't satisfactory to me. <laughs> so, regardless of the regardless of the dates and and stuff like that, we'll just look at. The, the whole concept of um, an organization, whatever like that, having a seal. Um, you know, schools got seals, hospitals got seals, um, you know, rotary whatever got seals. Um, university, you know, college. university, college, yeah. whoever, Every seals are, yeah, it's not, you know what I mean, um, lawyers, whatever like that, they got seals. Um, with the issue with, with most Moorish science temples is that they haven't been been exercising in the capacity of a governmental body. They've been always acting in the capacity of some religious whatever, right? Um, so now you have situations where, um, like with Brother Osiris, if he has to go to court or anybody for that matter, right? If they have documentation that they're going to submit to the court, instead of them going to a lawyer and paying whatever Mm -hmm. to get a seal, because they are part of this body, they would just come to here. We'll seal their stuff for them. Because if you're sending um, any type of paperwork, if you're sending something relative to um, um, putting some type of position out there, the the, the, the the paperwork should be quote unquote notarized. It should be acknowledged as somebody else witnessed that this person that's putting this thing forward, you know, everything in here is legit or whatever like that. So you seal it for them so that, you know, whoever gets it could know that, okay, this is from a legitimate yeah. source or whatever. And then with regard to the dates, the dates are on there so that people could know that this thing goes back to 1960, 1913 or whatever. It's not some new stuff a guy came up with yesterday, right? Which, which, you know, ties you to the legitimacy of this, you know? Because if, if you go to any, any notary whoever out there, the date part's blank. So they can put the date in. Mm-hmm. 
and the date is going to be the date that they put the seal on it. Whereas our seal has the date because we didn't found this, we didn't start this. This is something that we're, we're uh, this is something that we're adopting. We're adopting these things, right? So if 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 more more science temples took the position of using this in the in the function and in the capacity of what it really is, then more people would know about this. But they've taken it and they've put it in the corner over here and now people think that, you know, well this is just some religious organization, you know, and the more science temple and then you come here and you say you're Islam and all that stuff and then you go back out there and be nigger with a feather. Mm -hmm. Opposed to get people to actually correct their status and then when they correct their status now starting to exercise in that capacity as the Aboriginal the true Aboriginal <coughs> and Indigenous people of this jurisdiction that we would call Northgate, North America, North America. Whatever you know, what I mean. Um, so when 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 people say, you know, um, well, I I had my Quran for since '96, and I just realized that there are seals in it. Whoever gave them that Quran didn't tell them why that <laughs> why it got seals yeah, in it. Yeah. They even they even point to the seal and tell them, hey, well, you know what? This is sealed because this book called Quran is actually tying you to the estate. And this, um, that they would call quote-unquote book, is really a mandate. Spiritual mandate, earth plane mandate, um, making sure that the individual has something in their hand that, that is, is um, um, acknowledged as being true, right, exact, whatever, whatever, right? They, they put it on there as this book is owned by Moorish or whatever. That's why it's sealed. But, you know, you can't really own intellectual property because it's not tangible. Yeah. I mean, the only person who could own it is who transcribed it. Yeah. And none of these people who are around today that have Holy Qurans of Moorish Science Temple wrote that. Right? Um, you have anything on Seal? Anything else? No, no. I was just, I was just mentioning um, the the Quran that we have from mm. 1926, and the seal on this Quran it has the date on it from 1926, and that's how old the seal is. If you want to put a date on it, so in terms of when you do get a seal from the Moore Science Temple of America, and when you mentioned the date being on it. That's the tangibility of it, and that's the authentic authenticity of whoever knows that word can tell me <laughs> of of the seal as well too. It, that's the power of it. You know what I mean? Because you can't, you, you know, you can't really sell that seal. That seal is yours. That seal is your nation. That seal is from your nation. Yeah. Um, the next um, question, um, renowned royalty. Greetings, Moors. Just running through some questions that new Moors, as well as indoctrinated Temple Moors, have asked me. Some are nervous to come forth and ask the question to certain individuals <coughs> up front. However, I couldn't think of anyone better to answer these questions than Canaanite Moors, who's aided me greatly in my awakening. One, why is the priesthood dead at this particular point, and is it something that is even necessary to salvage? Um, the, the, the whole concept of the, the priesthood being dead even goes back to um, young Yahshua as a little boy turning over the tables of the money changers because the priesthood is dead. If these guys have an institution that's supposed to be making people better people, but they're telling people fee at the door or tithes or whatever like that, Clearly, they're not about people's upliftment, mm -hmm. but they have these titles, right? No different than um, somebody says, um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, and then you hear about some scandal about them sleeping with their students and stuff like that. Clearly, they're, they're not who they say they are. And the example that, you know, the master teacher uses, um, Brother Taj Tariq Bey, 
is, you know, if somebody says, come on down, get an operation, and then they pull out their tools to operate on you, and everything's rusty and stuff like that, you might not want to let those people operate on you. I don't care what stuff they got on the wall that says that they're qualified. I don't care how many other people went to them and came and said, yeah, he did a good job, whatever, my arm's working better and all that stuff. <laughs> this guy has rusty stuff to operate on you. He's not using no gloves when they, when they prepare your food and stuff like that. You might not want to use those people, sure. right? Um, salvaging salvaging the, the whole concept of um, the priesthood or the titles, that's going to happen when... Um, like Drew Ali said, new mourners come with their eyes wide open, seeing and knowing, and take these old mores or these people with titles, put those Negroes in the back, and carry out what's supposed to be carried out. If we're expecting the people who haven't done their job to somehow do their job after, you know, yes. like, it's like we say, Noble Drew Ali came 1913. We're here 2016 and people out here still call themselves black or whatever. Clearly the people who had this information hasn't done their job. Yeah. If they haven't done their job, it's probably best to come to the conclusion that they're not real about their titles that they have. Sure. Because if they say that they're grand sheik, if they say that they're grand governor, grand secretary, grand yeah. whatever of the Moorish movement, then they should have about 20 books out. They should have classes every single day. There should be a school or something like that. There should be something that they've done in a hundred years. We look at everybody else. What, um, you know, whoever, whoever, any business out there, you do research and they say they've been around for a hundred years and they have 50 different, you know what I mean? Places all over, uh, mm -hmm. different countries, yeah, yeah, they got yeah, stuff yeah, or whatever yeah, like that. Yeah. And then you look at Moorish, Moorish movement and then you look at, <coughs> you can't see nothing. All you're seeing is one or two temples all over the place, right? That, that's proof that the priesthood's dead. Yeah. And people need to stop relying on the priesthood and start <laughs> looking within and become a priest unto yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's fine. Because only you are going to save yourself. There's nobody that's going to come and do anything relative to you unless you know unless they prove themselves worthy or whatever like that but even even in that in that case just like with the brother you never said grand sheet come on come to court with me because these guys are trying to whatever you do come to court with me because you know you're the grand sheik and then you know mm -hmm. once they see the grand sheik with me then now they're gonna recognize that I'm a monk mm -hmm. eh, not like that <laughs> he's a priest unto himself mm -hmm. yeah. right you got fez on what do you need me for for what? All you need to do is just, oh, you got papers there? Sign, seal, go do whatever it is that you got to do. Because no, nobody's going to save you but you. Right? Can I, um, yeah, more on that. Um, just to add on to that, um, if you ever come across, or if you've ever come across um, one of the statements of the prophet where he says, um, I have given you everything to save a nation, take it and save yourself. You know, and I think, well, no, I think I know I have to ponder about all this. Um, basically, what he's saying is that, you know, you are your own savior. You are your own Christ. Um, <clears throat> when you've mastered um, that Christhood, you know, then you are able to come into the nation and support the nation. So that means that you have to go within yourself and, you know, go through everything, filter it out and master yourself, know who you truly are as an individual and as a more spiritually, mentally, and then you come back into the fold. Um, so that way, each individual, it's kind of like your body, each individual cell in your body works towards the whole. So if you're a priest unto yourself, if the priesthood is dead, if you're not going outside of self to look for salvation, when um, Yahshua said, go into self, Sure. then you truly master everything around you. So the priesthood, there's nothing that, you know, um, anyone outside of you can do for yourself because everything starts from you. If you're made in the image of Allah, if you're one with Allah, then therefore you have the capacity of Allah. You know, you're able to be that generator, operator, destroyer, as opposed to just being master, able and noble, being a man. So when you become Allah in man, 
and become one, then there's nothing that you cannot achieve. So you always have to be in your, in your frame of mind where you're always guarding your temple within. Um, and another thing to consider is that um, if you look at um, scripture um, and you look at um, <coughs> Yahshua and the trial that he was on, um, basically he was showing us, <coughs> he was really defending the nation from Rome because one of the things he said was give to Caesar what is Caesar's. So give to Rome what is his and take what is yours and build on it. So by that happening, you know, come back to 2017, you know, you look at municipalities, you look at what a municipality is, it's a Roman venue. So when you understand that you're still doing that same fight, but the solution is in the previous Helio text, then you have to apply that to yourself. So you have to build yourself from within with confidence so therefore, so that you can stand like um, Brother um, Osiris and any other Moors who really take it to them and stick it to them. Um, to, to comprehend that you have the right, you are the Lord of the earth, you know. So be the Lord of the earth within your own self and therefore that resonates outside of you. So, you know, you don't need someone to come and do a juju for you. You put it on. You, put you do it on yourself, you know, so you are the master, you are able, and you're noble, so once you pass that level, you come into your godhood, and then you start chopping things down and building and destroying, you know, Islam. Islam. So let me ask a question then. <clears throat> Is that, in a sense, exercising the demons for the trauma that we've been under? Like, that's a way of us relieving that trauma? Um, going, going within? Like going within, going yes. accord, you know, um, um, stand in your square, wherever you are. It's a big part of that because everything that you're going through right now, mm -hmm. um, through whether you realize it or not, you've created yourself. Mm -hmm. So okay. either way, yeah. you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So my you just right? do. <laughs> because, yeah, because your mind will give you everything you desire. Mm -hmm. No matter what, I was talking to a friend last night and the example came up, well, you know, people are always saying one thing, like you tell your child, don't forget your gloves at school. Mm -hmm. But in your head, you're saying don't forget it, but in your head you're seeing him losing the gloves. <laughs> That's so, what you tell him. Right, so right there and then, the thought already precedes everything. Mm -hmm. Even though you're saying don't forget, the mind don't think in negative. It just creates that image, right? So to say you have to reword it so that, right, remember the gloves so that it matches with, uh, what's in your head. But when that comes together internally, then you manifest it. So then it's, I shouldn't say then you manifest it, but it's manifested. manifested. So when we begin to comprehend and realize who we really are as spirits, in a vessel having a divine experience, mm -hmm. then you can really comprehend why certain things that when you're when you were in ego black and colored, you know, prevented you from being yourself. Mm -hmm. Now you comprehend, well, all I, all I have to do is just shift that. Just shift it. And you know, a lot of people tend to think, you know, because a lot of people will say, well, it's hard, because I'm guilty of it. Mm -hmm. But however, the opposite of hard or difficult is easy for you. And the choice is yours. Mm -hmm. So you have to detach yourself. You know, like Buddha says, um, you know, all suffering leads to attach. All attachment leads to suffering. Mm -hmm. So if you detach yourself from what's outside of you, and you always remain within, mm -hmm. and therefore there's no no need. You won't suffer because okay. you know your barometer in this physical um, um, paradigm that we're in is joy and pain. That duality. So we all know that we don't like to feel pain. So the next best thing, mm -hmm. gravitate to the short. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, what is the purpose of representing titles if they hold no value with the priesthood being dead? So for um, the layman, the individual who doesn't have knowledge, needs a example um, but it comes back to the same thing that if the example that we're supposed to follow is is 
corrupt, then you know they're not going to lead you anywhere, anyways. True. With their title, True. the title's still dead. Yeah. If if you if you're looking at corrupt individuals being the 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 reference point of you know what I mean where you're trying to go, you're only going to corrupt yourself. This is why you know you, it, it's 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 not it's not really it's not really beneficial for the leader to lead because some follower guys gonna say why is that guy leading because yeah, everybody got everybody got an opinion yeah. you know what i mean um then it's not good to follow because you know you're following and you see this guy sending people off a cliff or whatever <laughs> now you look like you're the renegade or whatever because you don't want to go with with what the leader guys are saying but then if we say well you know be onto yourself now you have now it's you it's on you whether you want to go over the, you want to go over the cliff go right ahead you know you, you're responsible for your own actions right um you know i i don't i don't think that um it's uh negative with titles you know what i mean like you know for example um if if um like even if even with brothers papers or whatever if he wants witnesses right i don't put grand she kujo on there there's, there's no it doesn't really hold weight like that because it's, he's the one going in there it has nothing to do with whether i'm there or whatever like that you know what i'm saying um but you know because of the the lack of work that's been done by individuals with titles is why we take the position of of forcing people to be priests unto themselves because these people haven't done anything with the titles anyways so so what what is the what's the purpose of having the title if you haven't done nothing with it you know what I mean if you haven't done anything with the title you know what I mean like like you know again we look at uh, at all the other people who or all the other nations of people who have been around or who have been in America as long as we've been around and then we look at what they got compared to what we have, right? Yep. They, they teach that their people are priests unto their self. So everybody takes the position of being a leader and puts their part in. Yeah. They're not expecting just the leader put their part and then everybody else sitting down waiting for the leader guy to do something. You look at some, you know what I mean, um, if it's... Even if it's um, if we look at Chinese or whatever, the Chinese guy who has yeah. billion dollar business, he's building the temple for the Buddhists or whatever. You're not going to no European go get no. a handout. True, true. They're not, um, you know, um, saying that the head guy is he's the one that has to do it. They're gonna go in their own pocket and say, here's fifty thousand, here's twenty thousand, here's a school. Here's what, what, what do you need? Because I'm, you know what I mean? I'm able to, I'm, I'm part of whatever like that, the nation, so I'm going to support. Our people lack that. Yeah. Our people lack that, you know what I mean? Recognizing that they have something and then doing it to support their own. You know what right. I mean? It always has to be they got to get something from right. somebody in order for them to, when, you know, again, like, you know, it's like, it's like Yashua said, ye are gods. So if you're a god, well, you need stuff outside yeah, yourself, looking up yeah. for him and stuff like that, salat to stuff, <coughs> when you're a god. Or you salat to yourself. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And as soon as they talk, start talking like that, because it's, it's going to be the same people with these titles, again, um, I was talking with Sis about this again, that, you know, it's, it's people with titles that made me realize the that they ain't know anything about titles, right? Because they tried to pull title on me. Well, because I want to be friends with Mocha, you know, and they don't like Mocha, but they want me to relinquish my title because they don't like her. Well, <laughs> take you guys' title because me and Mocha, we're cool. <laughs> you guys can keep your title. You know what I mean? Because we all need titles to do this work right here. Because it's really about the work. It's not about the title. And then we we're explaining that too, that, you know, that's why everybody's <coughs> mad at RV Bay Publication. Because RV Bay Publications put out a book called Administrative Functions. 
that lets you know the title mm -hmm. and what all the duties are of these people who have these titles. And then when you go to these people with these titles, and then you <laughs> ask them, hey, um, I'm reading this book, where do you get that from? How do you get that? You shouldn't be going to them. Why are you going to them? Because they're not. Oh, so clearly you guys are the guys <laughs> who are playing games with the titles. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you don't want people to know, all right? Um, can you expound on what we as a nation define as family? Any, anybody got, got something for that? Family, nation, mm -hmm. nation being a family. Well, I, the, the question was what we as a nation define as family. I yeah. would say that, you know, really it should be you defining family first. And then, but that's, that's, that's your, your priorities. Like my priorities are, you know, God, family, nation in that order. And when I say God, I mean, you know, Allah, family, nation. So, yeah, the nation's important, but if you don't have a strong family, then, you know, work on that first. You're still a more, but, you know, families build communities, communities make the nation. So, that question, in that sense, you know what I mean, it's not really, it's not really, pertinent like it's not the only the only the only thing that I can say to that question is culturally the L and the B are titles and once you're once you have you know the same title as I do we're family we're family right mm -hmm. and, and it, the, ultimately you could say that the nation's perspective is we're one family in this nation mm -hmm. what people outside of the nation have to say about it is it doesn't it's, it's matter. irrelevant it doesn't matter right. Right. and they cannot define that in any in any form of law or or, or, or legal legality. Hey, so yeah. Yeah. Um, to add on to what Ted was saying, um, um, families. Um, we know as family, and what to me seems true about family is um, your pedigree, your bloodline. Um, your lineage. So if we look at our own <coughs> personal families, um, what ties us together is our blood, whether it be from the mother's side or the father's side. So when you look at family, it's that common commonality of that we're connected to one source. Um, so you could take it on a micro level or macro level. Micro level is our own indi individual family. Macro level, you look at the whole of humanity. Um, all the um, different um, Asiatic families that we have um, um, throughout the earth. So family, it's, it's a unit. You know, again, you look at your body from a micro um, perspective. You look at it from each individual cell belongs to the whole. Um, each has an individual job to do to contribute to that whole. So when everyone does their job in the family, everything harmonious. Mm -hmm. But if you got brother and sister fighting over who um, who should inherit Who's the real the, yeah, uh, <laughs> who's the real head, you know, when, you know, mom and dad go, who gets to control the estate, who gets, you know, to dictate how we divvy up the, the funds of, of mm -hmm. our estate, then you have an issue because yeah. at the end of the day it should all work as one. And when it doesn't work as one, we have disease. You know, you have um, family members who just cut themselves out from, you know, become that island and go do their own thing for whatever reason. But, you know, sooner or later, they have to come back home like the prodigal son. You know, so no matter how far you go away from your, your pedigree, whether you be Negro, black, colored, sooner or later, you're going to realize that, hey, this is who I truly am. This is my family. Like, it's not anything fiction. This is a real, real artifact as opposed to an inanimate object. No. And just like um, <clears throat> just like the the um, the Chinese brother ran up on Noor mm -hmm. because he recognized that was family. Mm -hmm. Here's my address, phone number, work number, all mm -hmm. that stuff. <laughs> 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 I've met him before. Yeah. He's at my calling, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't think he's family, giving him his address and all that, then is a bank. Then we're, you know, let's let's go be Negro. Let's go be Negro. <laughs> Got family? Okay, family. Oh, so, yeah, we'll go. Yeah. I'm 
the Orgel from Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. But I'm also going to uh, uh, reference familiar, because they both have the same root. And familiar said, is the, the meaning for familiar in law is the word is equivalent to the word no, K N O W. So, you know, now when you get to family, there's three or four pages as far as the yeah. definition is concerned by law. But uh, the first one is the word is used to designate many relationships. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, we're talking about familiarity mm -hmm. and we're talking also love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So, when you take it from that perspective, from the Moorish perspective, we're all family because yeah. we're supposed to be treating each other with those five principles mm -hmm. and we're supposed to get to know each other. And, you know, we, we, when we're babies, we know the family as, you know, whatever household you're in, your mother, your father, your sister, your brothers. Mm -hmm. But then as you go through life, you realize that there are many different types of family. Before I came here, I came from a Buddhist meeting, and those people are my family too. And we don't share any bloodline together, at least nothing recent, but we know each other. You know, we know each other very, very well, and we care about each other. So family has to do with... Do you love these people? Do you care about these people? Yeah. Are you invested in their happiness? You know. Um, I got family, group of persons, and that's we gotta look up on that too. Made up of parents and their children. Um, number two, the children alone of such a group. Three, group of persons under one roof, including parents. Whatever we said that. Um, children, kin, servants, etc. So, servant is part of the family once you become one. Next one is a group of persons connected by blood relationship, uh, descent lineage, group of things with some common characteristics. So, the family of um, like specific species, whatever, and uh, bio. Classifications of plants or animals larger than a genus but smaller than an order. So basically, family is just a group of group of persons, connected or unconnected, as long as you're part of it. Uh, so I also want to add, um, I watched uh, Rasmaria Bay, an old video, with, um, <clears throat> and she was saying that how government is family, you're right. and basically. She's basically saying that government, like family, is how government structure is based off. Mm -hmm. So you have the woman as, or the feminine energy as the head, because of every household, the woman is the head. Mm -hmm. She takes care of the house, mm -hmm. she delegates the, the, um, the chores, and the feminine energy is the enforcer. He enforces the law. <laughs> Which is make sure the children do this, make sure the children goes that, make sure everything, everybody's under discipline and order. Listen to your mom. Listen to your mom exactly. <laughs> so, just like how society is based off, there you have the head of the, the president or the prime minister and all the Queen. all the other levels, and then you have the enforcers, and then you have the people or the subjects. So, basically. The beehive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Basically, sure. family is go family is could be also equated as government as well, like the structural wise. Can I um, just add on? Um, I just stumbled off onto this. Um, just doing some research on this swastika, and this came up: um, the universal divine blueprint and our galactic her story with the Mayan calendar by Elizabeth um, Churchman, 20th of August, um, 2010. I'm just going to read on just the intro. Um, it has been proven by the Aboriginal Moabite nation that we are all descendants of the daughters of Moab. The prefix Ab is indica in indicative of the Aramaic word for father, who is Ra, and original meaning from the stars. We are all children of Ra and great mother Zudakaius from the stars. We are galactic star seeds on earth. The Aboriginal Moabite nation goes back to Pangaea before the continents of Earth separated. The separation of the continents occurred as a result of nuclear holocaust at Sodom and over the Dead Sea. The sole survivors after the holocaust 
are descendants of the daughters of Moab. We are all on earth, Moabites, one land, one people. Then it goes on and on and on. So we're all land, mm -hmm. so one, one people. Mm -hmm. Where is that from? Um, it's um, the art. I think it's an article from two, um, 2010, August 20th. Um, the Universal Divine Blueprint and our galactic her story, her dash story with the Mayan calendar by Elizabeth Trutwin. T R U T W I N. Okay, throw it in. Mm -hmm. um, there are the last question, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there are a few more who take the tagline, Adepts are born, not made, out of context, in order to justify why they feel they are qualified to motion and do things that traditionally and culturally would take decades to practice and master. Could you please elaborate on the intended meaning of this quote? Now, the, the um, quote of Adepts are born, not made, is would would have to be put on somebody by an by an addict. Like somebody doesn't take that on their self, saying that because you know you could be anybody. But you know it's no different than um when you have um if you look at um um when somebody vouch for somebody. I mean I vouch for Amari because you know he. he knows how to fix stuff, so you need some fixed talk to that guy because he knows how to fix stuff, right? The the that statement being made is for somebody to vouch for another person who might be considered not qualified. Right? So for example, when when the Moors said, okay well you know in order for you to be a temple or whatever like that, you um, you're going to need somebody to be grand sheep and Kujo, you're going to be it. That, that um, statement was made to me because I had no information about, about this as far as the Moorish perspective, nationality or anything, but everything else I had information on because I was studied in all the different schools of thought prior to this. So when they start throwing off questions to me about, you know, well, who's this individual and what's this and do you know what that? And then I could just answer them. That made them recognize that in order for me to be in this position, it was because I was born to be in this position because I was already qualified with everything. Only thing I was missing was just my nationality. Everything else was already some, some, something that, that, you know, like you said, I, I was in it for that one, you know, at that time, yeah, you can say decades, because you're looking at um, coming into consciousness, say, around, say, 93, right? So there was at least a decade and a bit that I was already studied into knowing the, my, the, the history of my people and knowing our culture and things like that. So it was, it was easy for them to do that. But when individuals take that on themselves to say, well, you know, um, I can go to them because Arabs are born, not made, that's, that's a misqualification. Because they can't do that for themselves. Like an individual can't say for themselves that I'm an addict because I was born that. Somebody has to qualify that yeah. you were born that. Right? And as soon as they do it, do it on themselves, start you know what I mean? Looking at people funny and stuff like that, and, you know, <laughs> don't really go full with them, you know what I mean? Because, you know, there are some people who are that qualified without the decades, you know what I mean? There are ancestral people who come again, and the same info they had thousands of years ago, they have right now, in this lifetime, you know what I mean? That they know how to do the rituals, they know how to do the pro, they know how to you know what I mean? Get certain things done. Um, they know how to explain things. They know how to tap into you. You know what I mean? Um, triggering things in you to make you wake up and things like that. So, you know, don't completely cast them away when they make those claims, but um, just recognize that, you know, along with the seers and, and the um, 
highly enlightened people. There's also false people who aren't enlightened and they want to be popular. You know, they were the, the guy who got pumped off in high school and they want to be somebody you now. So they're going to say certain stuff to make you think that they're who they are when they're not really that. Right? Um, with um, that, I think that was it for questions. Oh, one more question. Um, is it possible to excommunicate a more from the nation? <laughs> um, um, to, 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 to put um to put a to answer the question with a question, is it possible to uh, make your family member not your family member? Can you excommunicate your dad? from being your dad? Can you excommunicate your brother from being your brother? Probably not. <laughs> you pretend that you did. You could not talk to them, but they're still going to be your brother or whatever. So um, when, when, when we look at people who have done things that they need to whatever, um, you know, um, a law administers justice, not individuals. So, you know, they're going to crash their car or something, don't worry. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're going to stub their toe or something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and, and, you know, they, they learn from, from, their, um, from their lesson that the higher force was teaching them. You know what I mean? Or they don't. Or they don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? If they don't, you know what I mean? Those people, you know, that, that's why... For example, um, when you look at, um, you know, a good example is Animal Kingdom. You know, when they have the, um, you know, the, the, the bad seed or whatever like that, usually they get some scratch on them or, you know, I mean, they mark them in some way so that it's known that that's, that's the one, don't mess with that one. You know what I mean? Um, so when people start doing um, things against the nation um, recognize that the things that they do against the nation really only reflect on themselves. It doesn't reflect on the nation. You know what I mean? Because they can't, they can't make this something <coughs> bad or they can't taint this. Because everybody's, um, like, once, once we take the position of saying, you know, we are, we are a nation, you know, um, if, if, people did what they were supposed to do since the beginning, there wouldn't be an issue, you know what I mean, with these type of people running around pretending that they're this and then they're not really it or whatever. Now we got to try to deal with these people. Don't worry, just leave it in a lot of hands. If you know who they are personally, you know what I mean, you know, that's why we are um, scientists, you know what I mean. Things can de get dealt with without physical stuff on people. Things get that dealt without dragging somebody by their collar somewhere. You know what I mean? There's there's, you know, black candles that you could use and stuff like that. You know what I mean? There's uh, there's ways to you know, they've got dolls you could put and stuff like that <laughs> if you really want to excommunicate somebody. <laughs> you know? <laughs> One thing with these people, when you start um, coming at them wrong, you know, they like to call highwaymen on people and stuff like that. So to, to, to eliminate that, you know what I mean? To get yourself out of, you know, being accosted by people who you don't want, whatever, you know, let's go down to the thing, you know what I mean? Be, be, be friends with them for a day, you know, get one of their strands of hair or something like that. <laughs> 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 and you'll see how fast they stop bothering you. You know what I mean? Once you once you activate. You know what I mean? That wonder twins. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, we you know, you can't you can't excommunicate family, but you could put a bullseye on them and um, you know, let them let them know. That's why we call out people. That's why we put people on blast when they do stuff crazy. So that everybody knows. If this name comes up, or this image comes up, or this whatever comes up, 
know that we told y'all about those people, that you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can't say that we didn't tell you. If you get played after, then it's on you because there's a bullseye on that guy. You know what I mean? You're not questioning why the bullseye is on him? Don't stand next to him because if there's a bullseye, that means that somebody's going to be sending something to them. And you don't want to be in the way and get their stuff. All right? Uh, any more questions before we close out? It's clear. All right, so we'll, um, we're supposed to be um, doing um, another session in Ottawa, February 25th. Um, if anybody's interested, last time we went to Ottawa, we had two cars. Two cars? Two cars. Yeah, two cars. Two cars. Two cars. We had two cars last time we went to Ottawa. Um, there, there's moors out there that have, you know, access to some room and board and stuff like that. So if you're interested in making the Ottawa trek, speak with Brother Amari, mm-hmm. myself, Brother Omar. Um, we also want to um, thank everybody for the Juali Day festivities. Um, everything went well. It was, a, it was a very good event this year. Uh, looking forward to next year. And um, you got any... Other announcements or anything for like that? Um, no, no um, not necessarily. Um, just more or less, we are looking to have a town hall meeting in the near future. Um, sorry? Yeah, yeah, in, February. in February. So we, we haven't had a, like, we haven't set the date completely as yet, but it's going to be set. Um, we would love everyone to come out to that. As a matter of fact, everybody should be out to that. Um, there's a lot of information that's going to be disseminated in regards to us moving forward. Um, a lot of people have been throwing at some ideas at us in terms of businesses, in terms of banking, um, in terms of um, uh, having accounts like gold, gold accounts or um, um, and other effects. So come out for that. We will, I said we will, I'll be sending out the. When, when we set a date, we will send that out to everyone. Um, that's first. Um, actually, let me speak to the nation, actually. So, moving forward, I'm going to be sending more emails out. Um, well, first, I want to thank everyone from last, last solstice and last past solstice years in regards to dudes. Um, there's a there's some mores in the room right now. I want to say like a huge thank you. And you know who you are um, for the dues that you've you've been contributing over the past uh, months. It's 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 helped a lot. Like trust me on that. Um, that's that. So I'm gonna put out an email in regards to dues. Um, us as the heads of the Moore Science Temple in, in in Canaan land. There's a lot of works that we've been doing. And we've been getting a lot of thank you from Moors as well. However, there's more that needs to be done. Um, one thing we want to mention, I'm going to mention it out there, is the, the temple up here in Canaan land, temple number five. Um, a brick was thrown through the window. Um, if whoever's here, you can look back, you can see there's a window's broken. We don't want to count it for a hate crime or or to that effect, however, a brick was thrown through the window. Why is that? We don't know, but it has to be paid for. Um, so we're going to be asking for assistance on that, if possible. Um, if you know how to fix windows, if you know someone that knows how to fix windows, if they could help us out, um, that could be a donation from you, whatever, but we need to get it fixed. Um, so as I said, moving forward, there's a lot of things on the, on the burner right now for us to be doing as Moors, and we're going to be putting it out there. If you have something that you want to bring to the table as well, bring it. But there's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening this year. So on that note, <coughs> dues, if possible, is 25 notes. If you could give more, give more. If you could give less, give less. But if you're part of the nation, you want to be part of the nation, it's going to take dues to uplift everything that we're doing. Other things that we do is we have books, we have DVDs in the, like on the walls. Contribute to that as well, too. That's first. Second thing is I'm going to be myself. Um, 
possibly starting in like in the middle of, of February, having another day when the temple is open. Like, I, I, it has to be open more than once. We understand that. It's just that not a lot of all the Moors are able to do it. So I'm going to be having it open possibly on Fridays or on Saturdays. Make, I'll be making announcements to that effect as well. Other than that, I go in peace. Hope everything's good. Islam. Islam. One more announcement. Um, we just finished the um, Wisdom of the Womb compilation album. It is now available on uh, willofallah.com. Willofallah.com for the new compilation. Um, we sh we're supposed to be, we are the CDs. We should have the CDs um, probably in a week or something like that. So we'll have the CDs um, at, you know, on location for um, whenever we get that done. Um, and don't forget to frequently visit rvbaypublications.com. That is our Moorish Online University. You might have um, heard, you know, here say don't go there and all that stuff. But it is what it is. You know what I mean? The, the information is credible. And, uh, and free. can be qualified and free. So please visit rvbaypublications.com any chance you get that you're studying on. And um, with that, I think we'll, we'll close out. As long to everybody in attendance, and we'll see you next week. Next week, Sunday, uh, 22nd of the month. So we'll just close out with the prayer, and that'll be it for today. Face the east, five on the left, two on the right. A lot of Father of the Universe. A lot of the Father, Father of the Universe. Father of Love. Father, Father of love. love. Truth. 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 Peace. 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 Freedom. 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 And justice. And justice. Allah is Allah's my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night. By night. And by day. And by day. To his holy prophet. To his holy prophet. Noble Jawali. Noble Jawali. Islam. Islam. Ashik. Ashik.